Well, hi there. I am Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to make a Christmas card with a window in it. Ellen Hudson's new release has some really fun stamps in it. One is Holiday Shopper Lady, which I'm going to use in this particular video. I love the feeling like a basket case stamp down there. Might have to use that. Then there's the Book Lady, for those of you who love to read books. Look for that in a new video coming out soon. And the Ugly Sweater Accessories, which you can use on this these ladies or any other ladies in the collection. And we also have a winter window, which is going to be the feature for this particular card. And before I started on the ladies, I wanted to share how the window goes together and the parts that come with the die set. So there's the window itself that has the outline and the stitched inner line. And I put them both together by just taping them on the back. And then I added the icicles by putting my adhesive on the front of the icicles so they're glued to the back inside of the window. There are two little curves to make little hillsides. And what I did was put a little bit of a dimensional adhesive on either side of them. Make sure it's wide enough that it's not going to show through the front of the window. And there you have one hill. Next you put some dimensional adhesive on the back of that hill and then you can attach your trees to that one and it saves you having to figure out how to adhere them you just stick them onto that before you put the next hillside on and it's kind of a reverse way of building a scene so here's the other piece of a uh, little curved background there curved hillside and then the whole thing I'm sticking onto a white card base. So it's white on white on white. So perfect for Christmas and so clean and simple. Really easy to make a whole bunch of these. I used a little bit of liquid pearls to add some snow across everything, including the hillsides and the trees, just to make sure it looks like there's snow all over. And bada boom, bada bing, that one came together really quickly. So that window is a really fun die to have, and it has uses for all year long. Stay tuned for what I mean by that, okay? So for this particular one, I've die cut the window out of the center, and I'm gonna use it for one of my ladies. This is the shopping lady, holiday shopping lady, who's wearing an ugly sweater, and I've got her positioned where she's gonna show through the window in the way that I want to. I just had it laid down there so I could place her using my Misty and stick her on there and get her all stamped up and ready to color. To figure out what to do for the background, now you can just color her, but if you want to do a crazy background or something, then I'm taking a light gray marker and I'm, I just made the window openings there so I could figure out where to stamp everything. And I stamped a, a package, all the packages in a big pile. So there's a big bunch of things she's been wrapping. There's a basket down there. She has all different kinds of things to wrap her packages with. And I'm using a pen to just fill in the scene. So that down at the bottom, I'm putting some boxes underneath her basket. I added a table and noticed that I didn't get out a ruler. I didn't stress out about it. I just kind of sketched those things in there. And I used a post-it note to do some masking to make her ugly sweater look like the, the little ornaments, ornaments or little lights on it were matching with the curve of her body instead of just kind of going right across the crease in the fabric. Now this is not a coloring video, so I'm not putting the colors on the screen and I'm doing some super speedy coloring here because I really wanted to focus on what it's going to be to put this thing together and how to get her to look through the window. There's going to be another video coming on Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, some someday this week. And I'm going to be sharing how to do this same die and one of the ladies. I'll be using Book Lady in that one in a different kind of a way. And you're not going to want to miss it because I was going to try it with this one and this one was too hard to do it with, but the other one had simple enough shapes. I figured I could work it out. Overall with the coloring on something like this, if you're going to try to put a whole scene in here, I'm just putting my first layer of colors down. I'm not putting a lot of shading in there, just a little tiny bit at the, the moment because I wanted to put a whole background in here. 
it's a lot of work to put a whole background in here and I'm going to color the front panel, the, the panel that's the outside of the house looking in the window. This is a lot of coloring for a card and I know most people aren't going to do this. That's another reason why I figured I'd make this a speed coloring. But if you are going to try something like this, I'm using really soft and muted colors in the background. I'm using my grays and I used a really desaturated type of green back there. And I'm trying to just minimize that by not putting a lot of detail in there. I'm throwing some picture frames in there, but I just kind of scribbled some color. I'm trying not to draw any attention to it. I just want her to have a home that she's standing in, some sort of surroundings so that she's not just kind of out there with her table and nothing in her house. I decided to put some lights on the tree by using my colorless blender to make some circles and then I'll add in some twinkle lights with a white pen later. But I decided to use my grays to start doing my shading on this. And one of the reasons I use grays on this is because if I were to try to use three reds in that shirt with all of those lights on it, then the lights themselves, I could try to figure out how to shade them, but they wouldn't come out looking like they were part of the same sweater. So when you have a pattern like that, it really helps to just use your grays to do that and then go over it again with that main color. Because when I went over that gray with the red, it just kind of worked. It just kind of pulled everything back together again. So I'm adding a little bit of detail with my white pen because the white pen is our friend, right? And then I had wanted to stamp the list in there, but I didn't feel like doing the masking at the time. So I just glued it on top. I wanted to have this panel open up, so I needed this window cut into there so that I could have my window show through. And how was I going to do that and line it all up right? Well, I taped it down from the one that I had originally cut out and only put my masking tape in the center so that when I did my die cutting, I'd end up with just that nice big window in the background. To do the outside of the house, I'm doing some wood. I've done wood innumerable times here on YouTube, so I'm not gonna get into super big detail. You can use any different kinds of browns with it. And I did a coat over the whole thing, and don't even worry if your marker is streaky because we're gonna go over it a couple times. And then I used a dark color to make the slats in the wood. So it's kind of like having some wood siding on here. Just make yourself some lines. I'm not using a ruler. Don't use a ruler. That's way too much time and effort. This is a Christmas card. It's not fine art. So enjoy yourself and don't stress out about trying to make everything even and measuring out all those slats. Because now we can go over it with a mid-tone brown of some kind. I used a real desaturated kind of color so it wouldn't feel all yellowy again. But I still had some of that richness of the yellow showing through. And then the front panel here is all done, that outside house. I decided I did want some color on the window panes. And since you're going to be able to see it from the inside, I'm going to color both sides of this. And that will also help to make sure that there's no white edges that show around the, the window panes, because sometimes you can see the white edge of the paper. But if you color both sides, that usually just just about takes care of any of that extra white that might be showing through. And it doesn't matter what kind of brown you use on any of this, just any old brown will do that goes with your color scheme on your card. And again, you can make all of this much simpler. You can color just the brown window. You don't have to do the outside in wood color, but I'm taping it with some scotch tape because that's really not going to show because now I have this nice hole in my card where the girl is going to be able to look through the window out toward the outside. And of course, it's snowing outside. So we have to use our white pen to make some snow all over everything. You could even add a piece of acetate in between those window panels to add a little bit more glassiness to that. Uh, maybe even some frosted acetate would be kind of fun, some vellum. And that would be kind of a neat thing to do. But the card came out really fun. It's got a lot to it, so you've got to send this to somebody who's going to appreciate all that coloring. Somebody like me! So if you don't have anybody in your list who will treasure it, 
I would be happy to take that off your hands because I'd love to see if you decide to try something crazy like this. But the inside doesn't leave a whole lot of room for writing. So don't make one of these for somebody for whom you'd like to write out a whole big long letter. So there's my video for today. Stay tuned on Tuesday or Wednesday for the fall card with the book lady in it. Because that one is pretty spectacular. All right. I'll see you very soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.